church. Praise God for Jesus Christ, our Savior, is risen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Where I would normally be wishing you happy Easter, I'd like to wish you a happy Resurrection Day and probably share a note from our Bible study. We've been learning in Bible study uh, that pertaining to the Easter time of year or Passover, that during the period of history, uh, making the birth or marking the birth of the Christian church, both Hebrew and Aramaic, where Jesus' ministry was based in Aramaic, the holiday is called Pasha, meaning the Christian celebration of Jesus' resurrection, not the Jewish Passover. So with that, we have announcements, but the first will be, we'd love it if you could join us at our Bible study, which is at 10 o'clock on Thursday or 5 p.m. We're learning a lot, and Pastor has guided us uh, in the history of the Bible and learning more about our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, announcements at this time. Um, we do have our uh, prayer shawl following Bible study, which is Thursday. This Wednesday, we have choir practice, Linda, at 7 p.m., okay? Um, bluegrass next Saturday is at 5 o'clock. Dinner will be following, so please mark your calendar. We'd love to have you. Are there announce any other announcements that I might be missing? Okay. We have one, Marcia. Missions meeting at one o'clock on Wednesday. Okay. Very good. Presley has her hand up. Okay, if hearing no more announcements, could we please bow our head for a brief moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, this is Resurrection Sunday. Let us praise you, God, as Jesus Christ is risen. We pray that the, at first we take time, Lord, to ask Jesus to reveal what needs to be resurrected within our hearts this year, and then act accordingly to your will. Lord, we ask your blessings on us this morning. We invite the Holy Spirit to be with us as we worship. And we ask all this in your name and God's wonderful children said, Amen. Good morning, everybody. Usually we have some music here, but that's a little different. Hey, look who's here. <laughs> Good to see ya. Good to see everybody. Isn't this awesome? Nice sunshiny day. Uh, we're going to start out. We're just going to say thank you, God, for this beautiful, beautiful day. One, two, three. Thank you, God. We've all been waiting. How many of you enjoy the winter, the snow, the cold, the scraping the car every morning, the worrying about falling on the ice? And yet you live in Michigan. And so <laughs> I always find that interesting. Uh, but we're going to do things. We're going to do prayer concerns and joys. And I'm just joyful to be here as always. What a blessed week here this week in Holy Week. I uh, look out there and most of you are smiling. And that's awesome. So if you're not smiling, what are you supposed to do? The person next to you, if you see they're not smiling, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, give them an elbow or something. Hey! <laughs> I always remember I'm a hockey player at heart. So, alright, who has some joys? Who has some prayer concerns that we need to... Bring before the Lord. Yes, sir. Jesus says, 
because they will know us by our what? By our love. It's not just words, it's our actions. Yes, Sir William. <laughs> so Bill has a knob on his neck. They're not sure what it is. They did some tests, don't have the results, but he said that he's glad because the doctor has told him they won't have to amputate from the neck above. Good news. So let's come before the Lord and begin our worship service. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you on this most blessed of days, the highest of all the holy days, the resurrection day, the day that changed the world. And we celebrate that uh, when your son came from the tomb. And uh, we just know that above all things, that shows how much you love us, that Jesus came to earth, that he sacrificed himself upon the cross not to benefit himself at all, but because of his love for us. We just pray for the hearts that are gathered here, the hearts that are watching this at home, home that your Holy Spirit touch us, that the impact and the message from you to us is clear, that you love us more than we will ever be able to understand. We know that all those that are gathered here and at home have prayers on their hearts, people they are praying for, and we know that you hear our prayers that you are the good, loving Father. So hear our prayers, know our heart, and we just give all the glory to you, all the praise to you as we come before you to sing your glorious name, to worship you, and to grow closer to you with every breath we take. In the name of Jesus Christ, who loves us more than we will ever understand, all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Now we'll stand and sing a hymn, I believe. Oh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning, Presley. Yeah, now you're going to quiet down. Good morning, children. Happy Resurrection Day to all the kids out there. So, I'm uh, going to tell on Presley here a little bit. The uh, boys were very nice and took me out for a birthday dinner on Friday. And so, we found smelt. How many of you have had smelt recently? Apparently, they're becoming an endangered species. But anyways, we found some, and it was yummy, and Presley was there. And you'll never guess what she had to eat. Because it was very interesting, and so since you'll never guess, I'll tell you. Peanut butter sandwich with french fries and ketchup. <laughs> An interesting combination, but you liked it, right? See, there you go. <laughs> so today, we're going to talk about love, because today is Resurrection Sunday. Today is the day above all days uh, that is just wonderful and glorious. And if you're a Christian and your heart is not filled with joy, and uh, I don't even have all the words. What word would you use, Jackie? Yeah, so I like putting her on the spot. She never knows what I'm talking about. So <laughs> just like being married. So anyway... <laughs> We're going to talk about the kids, but today is the day of love, 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 love. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves the children. Jesus loves all of you. Jesus loves us so much that he died on the cross, but we're going to talk about love a little bit in a way that the kids can understand. So, are you ready? So, I have this fancy ball. Do you know what this says on here, Presley? Right? It's a ball that says love. Can you say love? All right, turn around and tell Rosalie, love. Hey, how cute is that? That's your Easter present right there. So, but if this says love, and Jeff and I are friends, and we have been for a long time, most of his life. And so, but we have this love for each other, and just Jeff and I show our love for each other, and... We have lots of fun together because we love each other. And who are we leaving out? Presley. We're not giving any love to Presley. Why don't you show Presley some love there, Jeffrey? Ooh, good job. She's a natural. We're showing love to each other, right? But who are we leaving out? Everybody else out here, so uh, I brought some baseballs and I'm going to whiz at you to say love on them. Hopefully you can catch them. If not, ambulances are waiting outside. And the thing I want to point out, kids at home, kids here, kids at heart, does God want us to just love the people we like? The answer is no. Who are we supposed to love? Is that easy? Can I throw on this ball to... Presley or Jeff or Rosalie here in the front row, that can be easy, right? But getting it into the back row with the keezers and not hitting anybody in front when they're not looking and busting some glasses, that's not so easy, is it? And so this is a good example uh, of Jesus' love. Did Jesus die just for you? No. Jesus died for everyone. Does that include the people that live down the street that drive you nuts, that have the barking dog and the Harleys at 5 in the morning and throw parties till 2 in the morning and whatever else? Yes, he died for all of us. And what that puts in our heart, especially at Easter, because the world is aware of our celebration of Easter, and that is, that's the perfect time to talk to those people, to invite them to church, to say, you know, you're really irritating but I love you because Jesus calls me to love you. And uh, you might think that's kind of brasher, but uh, I've said that to people and they accept that. You know, like I know, believe it or not, I know I can be irritating at times. <laughs> but I also know that you love me, amen? See, in my mind that was going to be a lot louder. <laughs> but I know you love me, right? Yeah, there you go. That sounds better. And we love Presley, Jeff, Linda, Rosalie, everyone in this church. And then when we leave here, we're supposed to be so full of God's love that we can't help but love others, right? And that's the plan. Kids at home, that's what God wants. And so that is your children's sermon today. Everybody give Presley and Jeff a big round of applause for helping out today. Jeff is the new associate pastor here at church. 
prayer. You ready, Presley? We'll stay up here for a second, sweetie. So bow our heads for prayer, and then we'll say amen when the pastor tells you. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of the children. Uh, uh, we went out this week and delivered Easter bags to those kids and uh, got to see most of them. Only missed a couple. What a blessing it is to know that they are still living in your word, that they have those loving parents that are raising them so well in the Lord. And we just ask your continued blessing, whether it be earthly blessings or spiritual blessings, and we just give you all the thanks, all the glory, and all the praise for blessing us here at the Portage Prairie Church with these beautiful and wonderful children. And all God's blessed and beautiful people say, creation, the Father formed a plan. He would make a sacrifice to pay for the sins of man, but the offering that he would make must be greater than the rest. He could not give this gift of love unless it was his best. He had made the mighty mountains, but not as a sacrifice. He had hung the stars and the planets, but they could not pay the price. The offering that he would make must be greater than the rest. He could not give this gift of love unless it was his best. There was no rose red enough, only sinless blood would do. There was no lamb white enough, only God's lamb would do. It was his best. It was his very best. God gave his son for you. So he reached down and gently placed baby Jesus in the hay. And the angels all around him proclaimed that joyous day. Then God stepped back in heaven with a tear in his eye. He gave the world his very best. He watched his only son die. There was no rose red enough. Only sinless blood would do. There was no lamb white enough. Only God's lamb would do. It was his best. It was his very best. God gave his son for you. This time I'd like to ask our choir to come up.
morning is going to be in unison. I believe into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
1 through 14. On Resurrection Sunday, it has to do with, believe it or not, the resurrection of Christ. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and then he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, so you believed. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. It's the words of God for the people of God. anywhere I want to. I'm going to start with just a little bit. This is Resurrection Sunday. Now, uh, I've talked about it in the Bible studies, didn't much last week, but if someone asks you what Easter is, what Resurrection Sunday is, uh, everything that we preach that I've uh, preached up till now is pointing to the cross, right? The cross, the cross, the cross. We wear our crosses. I have crosses on my tie. But what is the big thing? Because we get focused on the cross, but the cross is just the beginning. What's the true miracle? The miracle is the resurrection. And as I've told you from the beginning of Lent, I want on our hearts to transform our minds, our hearts, what we think about this time of year through Lent. Uh, we uh, focus on the cross that the real miracle is the resurrection. So if someone talks to you about Resurrection Sunday, if they talk to you and say, what is Easter? You will say that Jesus died on the cross, but the really important thing is Jesus was resurrected. Jesus came out of that tomb, and then the thing that we have to do, what the sermon's about today is, because uh, this is all what your answer should be, what should be in your heart and on your mind as you look at this time of year. Jesus went to the cross, he was resurrected, and our Savior lives. Amen? You can believe in whoever else you want, Muhammad, anybody else, any of the Hindu gods, anybody you want, they are not alive. Paul writes about a lot. Uh, if you have a little doll, that's your God, right? If you talk about the Old Testament religions, they had their little idols, and they worshiped those little idols, and there's, that's a whole wonderful study to do that takes a long time if we're actually going to learn it. But they had little dolls for everything. We know the Egyptians had the cool-looking half-animal, half-people kind of stuff going on and painted on all that old stuff over there. It's kind of cool. But none of those things are alive. Christ is alive. And that's what I want on your heart. That's what I want for all of us from this church when we go forth for the rest of our lives, when we talk about Easter, when we talk about Resurrection Sunday, when we talk about Pesach. It is Jesus is alive. And so this sermon today is going to be about that. And this passage I'm going to read to you 
is one of my favorites because of what the angels say. And, uh, so 24-1, Luke, are you there? So what we're going to start doing, Sharon didn't quite understand what I had in mind. So I'm just sharing with her legs. <laughs> but at the beginning of the services, we should have on the screen all the passages I'm going to use for the sermon. Uh, that will change because the Holy Spirit changes things. And then uh, also the hymns and everything that, that you need to mark your Bibles. But how many of you are excited about getting outside here soon? Today was almost warm. But we had things planned in here, but I assume these services will be outside. That would be awesome. So anyway, this passage written by Luke. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Amen. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And guess what the ladies did? That's what I've been trying to teach you and telling you that it is important. And as they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, and this is the part I love, why do you seek the living among the dead? And so when we think about Jesus, when you think about your relationship with Jesus, when you think about Jesus in general, do you think of Jesus as being alive? When you pray to Jesus, when you pray what's on your heart, you know he's up in heaven, but really, is he alive? Is Jesus just sitting up there in heaven and listening? You know, he's got a secretary that's taking all his calls, and he gets, what, a million a minute? So, uh, but their phone system is much better than ours, apparently, and I bet you the Internet's way better than ours. Uh, so, but anyways, Jesus is up there. But is he truly alive? When you pray to him, when you think about him, what's in your heart, in your mind, is it kind of just a nostalgic Jesus? Is it the Jesus that, like I said, is sitting at the right hand of God, as the Bible tells us? Or is Jesus alive? Is Jesus able to do everything he did while he was on earth from heaven? And the thing that we end up doing, many people, is we have Jesus in our heart, in our mind. We think about Jesus, uh, but it's not real. We know he's alive, but he's in heaven. But Jesus is here with us. I have a friend that long ago had a conversation. His name is Jim. And uh, he said, uh, who do you pray to? And, you know, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the triune God. And he said, well, this is what I think. And he says, I think I pray to the Holy Spirit because Jesus doesn't do me any good because Jesus is in heaven and is just waiting to come back at the last days. But that's not true. And the Bible shows us that's not true because when was Paul called to be an apostle? It was after Jesus had ascended, right? And so Jesus is still with us. Jesus is still watching. Jesus is still walking with us. Jesus still loves you and cares about you and is here with you in your life. Amen? And so we know that from Scripture, but we also know that because there are people all over the world that can testify. I have a friend when she was a little girl. Uh, she grew up in a family not good. Not good at all. Not just the parents, I mean the whole family, not good. Uh, but Jesus came to her and sat on the foot of her bed and talked to her as a little girl and said, you're going to have a rough life, but never doubt that I am with you. I will always be with you. And that one woman now grew up in her life as the only Christian, the only person with strong faith, where most of the family has been to prison. Most of the family laughs at her for, not, for believing in God. But she has had that faith, and it's because Jesus came to her. I don't know how much you watch Christian world news and that kind of thing, but uh, of all places in the world, Jesus has been coming to people in Iran. And there's numerous documented cases, and they're not Christians to begin with. It's not through prayer. Jesus comes to them, to their rooms, and fills the room and says, I am Jesus Christ, and you need to repent, and you need to begin to believe in me. And the underground church in Iran is growing because Jesus is going there and calling people. And so Jesus is not dead. And understand, in Iran, you can be killed for being a Christian. 
The question I have for everybody every time, if there were police outside that would kill you for being here, would you still come? Because the early Christians did. And there are many people in many places in the world where that is a viable option, being arrested, being killed for being a church. But their faith is so strong and Christ is with them uh, that they come to church even though it could seriously cost them their life and they become martyrs. And so as we look around the world, we have the different groups of people. Uh, I want you to hear this, remember this, understand this. Uh, when somebody says, I don't even believe Jesus existed, know that they are just foolish. And they haven't read anything, that that's just an opinion. And uh, how many of you like to eat dirt? And nobody does so, but you might run into somebody that does, right? And it's the same way of people saying Jesus didn't exist because there is no person from antiquity that has more written about them from old scholars in old papers that they have everywhere than Jesus. So to say Jesus didn't exist is not the truth. And so you can look at that person and say, you need to read some books and educate yourself before you open your mouth. How many of you would be willing to say that? it really is what you should say. And uh, then after that, we have people that believe in Jesus as a prophet, but not Jesus as the Son of God. What do the Jews think of Jesus? He's a prophet, right? No Jew in the world will argue with you that Jesus was here. No Jew in the world will argue that Jesus was a prophet of God, but they will argue with you and tell you they don't believe that Jesus was a the Messiah, that Jesus was the Son of God. So they believe Jesus, but not as the Son of God. It's the same way with the Muslims, as I've told you before, and I'll tell you again. Jesus is in the Quran numerous times, not just once. But he's there as a great prophet of God. He is not there as the Son of God. And what sets us apart, what gives us our strength, what gives us the Holy Spirit, what gives us our our power to live on this earth in a Christly way, uh, to love, to live, to forgive, is that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus was resurrected. And the stronger you believe that, the stronger your faith is and the stronger you are as a Christian and as a person able to face anything that Satan can throw at you. So I want to go back a little bit to Jesus is not retired. How many of you think Jesus is in heaven playing shuffleboard, uh, you know, doing puzzles and going to the senior center two, three times a week to, to play cards and that kind of stuff? And uh, he's not. Jesus is alive. The one, one of the things I want you to take with you today is don't think of Jesus as dead. Don't think of Jesus as just in heaven. Think of Jesus as being here with us, that Jesus is with you. When you sit down today and eat your Easter dinner, know that Jesus is there. The Jews, when they have uh, Passover, they set a meal, they set a plate for Elijah because they believe that Elijah will come. They believe uh, that he can, in all seriousness, show up, but they know that God is with them, so they set that plate and if you're at home and if the Spirit moves, you set a plate for Jesus as a remembrance that Jesus is with us and Jesus is sharing this meal with us as he shares our entire lives with us. And so we have the statements and the questions that you have to ask yourself. Do you really, really, really believe Jesus is the Son of God? Do you really believe in your heart that Jesus is the Messiah? Do you believe that Jesus was crucified and then resurrected and do you believe Jesus is alive so if you believe that what is your relationship with Jesus you've gotten that far but is Jesus alive in you is Jesus alive in your heart in your words in your thoughts there's a big difference between praying to Jesus, but Jesus is far away. I don't really relate to him. I believe the stories. If I read the Bible, I believe what the Bible tells me. Uh, but 
it's not here. It's not part of who I am. So we have that reverence, you know, like we've looked at. We have joy and we have worship, right? We have the joy, woo hoo hoo Jesus, Jesus, right? Everybody here, as soon as I start preaching, uh, I think it's awesome because you guys just get so excited. I have to wait for you to sit down for five or ten minutes. Oh, wait, that was a dream I had. Anyway, but no, the joy is in your heart, and I can see the smiles on your face. But we have that reverence when you come to Christ. We have that reverence. We bow down. You are God. You are God Almighty. But is he with you? Is he alive in you? When you pray to him, do you truly believe those prayers, or is it a question mark? The Bible tells us if you pray with doubt, it's not going to happen. And the Holy Spirit searches our hearts. The Holy Spirit knows your heart. So when you say Jesus is alive, probably. <laughs> the Holy Spirit can change me, probably. Jesus forgives me, probably. You have doubt. And who is the person that puts doubt in your heart when you come before the Lord? It is Satan. It is not godly. You have no reason to doubt Jesus. Jesus has proven himself for 2,000 years. Jesus died upon the cross and was resurrected. Jesus has come to people. The Holy Spirit has changed your life. The reason any of you are here, period, is because the Holy Spirit is in your heart. If you had none of that, you would not come. It would be foolish, as the Bible tells us. People with those hearts think everything we do, read, and say is foolishness. And because you are here, God has touched your heart. Jesus is alive in you. But the question then is, to what degree? Is Jesus fully alive in you? Or is he kind of alive in you? We think of God, the, Shekinah, the word Shekinah. Some of you know, but I want all of you to know that the light of God. Does the light of God emanate from you? Which leads us to our next question. We're at a church, right? And the church is the people. This really is a worship center, as they would say nowadays. But we're here to worship God. We are the church. If someone, a total stranger, comes into this church and says, I'm looking for Jesus. Is he here? This congregation would say, hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome because, yes, Jesus is here. He is in this building. He is in our congregation. He is in our hearts. He is in our faith. He is in our minds. He is in our souls. Amen? And we should be just thrilled. That is the creator of the universe. That is the Son of God walking with us, living with us, guiding, with us, guiding us, talking to us. It should be the most thrilling thing in your life and I pray that it is but here's the question and this is where it gets quiet and yes we have two Bible studies and I will also tell you about Bible studies if uh, you have just a couple people or even yourself uh, we can do a long distance Bible study I can give you stuff to read or if it's just two or three people get, get together I'm willing to start something else because I believe in learning the Bible it is power it is the holy word of God but if somebody comes in here and we do that, is Jesus in our church? Yes. And then the person says, well, how do you know? And then, what do you say? The yes is good. The yes is powerful. The yes is loud. But when someone asks you, how do you know Jesus is alive? Your pastor just said, Jesus is alive. You're here celebrating the Passover, the resurrection of Christ. You say he's alive. I see it on TV. I see it on signs. Jesus is alive. You tell me how you know Jesus is alive. Right. And so you have to, as a Christian, you have to. Everybody say, I have to. Yeah. You have to be able to answer that question. And it will be a different answer for all of you because God doesn't talk to any one of us exactly the same. When God came to Mary, uh, Gabriel came to Mary, what happened? Room fills up and he says, do not be afraid, right? And that's how he spoke to Mary. Uh, 
when he spoke to Moses, and if he's going to speak to me, this is the one I like when he spoke to Moses, had the big burning bush, you know, I think that's pretty cool. And so, how does God speak to us? Some of us, he touches our hearts. I know people that have a room filled with light, and the voice of God says, you need to this, you need to stop, or you need to do this, and they have had those experiences with God. And so if someone asks them, how do you know God's alive? They'll go, I'll tell you how. And that's also why we have to share our experiences, the miracles that have happened in our life, the incredible things, the way God has blessed us. Uh, I've told you when I came here, and it's absolutely true, uh, when we get together, when Christians get together, uh, it's kind of like, uh, for a pastor, it's like kids at school. There's good noise and there's bad noise. You can tell when the kids are being naughty. It's a different sound in the room. And there's also a different sound in a room when you're talking about God and when you're talking about your car needs new tires. In a church where God is alive, where Jesus is alive, where Jesus fills the room each and every time we get together because where two or more are gathered, He is with us. And when those conversations become, this is what I read in the Bible this week. This is how God blessed me this week. This is the miracle that took place. My friend just texted me or called me, and they told me this. When those conversations take happen, or happen, there is a different sound in the room because it is a godly sound. And that godly sound is beautiful to God's ears. Because your life is either about you or it's about God. Amen. And so those conversations are beautiful. And so what I want you to take to heart to truly think about are these questions today. Do you truly, with all your heart, soul, and mind, believe Jesus was resurrected? Do you believe Jesus is alive? I think everyone here answers yes. The next question that I truly, I really want you, uh, Sue will put these uh, sharing in the email when you send the email out with these questions down. And so, now the next question is, is he alive in your life? And you say yes. The quick answer is yes. I want to, you have to, hear me clearly, you have to take that next step. Jesus is alive in my life, and this is how I know. Answer that question. Because that is your prayer to God. That is your true thanksgiving. That is your testimony. You can go anywhere in the world and talk to people about Christ when all you have to say is, I believe in Jesus and I know he's alive because of this. And when you have that, it is a key to changing your world and the lives of many people. And you will say, uh, I'm not called to that, blah, 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 blah. I don't accept that because we're all called to save souls, amen? And the reason Jesus went to the cross, the reason Jesus was resurrected, the reason Jesus has called us here this morning is because he wants us to save souls. He wants us to change others. He wants us to testify to his goodness and glory. So I pray and we'll pray here in just 30 seconds. Answer that question. How do you know Jesus lives in your life? So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this incredible Sabbath morning. As we celebrate the Passover lamb, we celebrate that Jesus gave his life, you resurrected him from the grave, and we just pray that this service, our hearts, our words, our songs, everything about us, individually and as your church, glorifies your holy name. We pray that you put on our hearts the importance of knowing you, the importance of believing you, not just believing, but living with you, allowing you into our hearts and be able to share that boldly wherever we go. Give us the strength, give us the power, give us the knowledge, help us to not fear, but to be bold, not in ourselves, but in you. We pray your blessing upon all those who are at home watching this video and all those who are gathered in your holy house to know the Lord, to live with the Lord, and to be one with the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Page 9.
we will read from the hymnal for communion today. For those of you that haven't been here a lot, uh, I like to go back and forth. Sometimes God puts things on my heart that he wants me to share about communion, and other times uh, we follow what is traditionally done in our be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their unending hymn of Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim and release the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, by the baptism of his death, and by his resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from the slavery to sin and from death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by your Holy Spirit. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you, and do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you as for the many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in the remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray boldly. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever.
breaking up the bread. It says, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. This is the cup, the blood of Christ. The blood of the new covenant. The blood that washes away your sin. The blood that makes you whole. The blood, the blood that gives you strength. That makes you that new person. It is by the love of God. It is by the sacrifice. The complete sacrifice of Christ. And as we take this Holy Communion on Resurrection Day. Uh, let us take seriously and in our hearts that God came to earth, that God was killed by the very people he created. And the answer to the question of why did he do that is always because he loves us. of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ given to you. Now we'll sing our, uh, read our closing prayer and sing the doxa. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others and for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, all God's blessed children say, Amen.
the truth? Woo, yes it is. So, I pray that all of you have a wonderful Easter, that you get to spend some time with your loved ones, either on the phone or in person, but it has been awesome being here worshiping God. Amen. And so we'll have our benediction, sing our prairie song. Uh, but before we do that, Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Yes, yeah, so not everybody knows that stuff. That goes. I haven't heard that much around.